It's been difficult uh, around um, this unprecedented time. And if you've been unfortunate enough to have toothache during lockdown, you'll know how difficult it's been to get help or even advice from a dentist. And a group of West Yorkshire dentists have got together to give advice to their patients. They are the first in the country to do this. One of those dentists is Dr. Armand Barty, uh, who you may know as one of Richard's Dead's professionals on the uh, Richard's Dead Breakfast Show. He's been on this show uh, before as well. Good afternoon, Doctor. Hi, good afternoon. So, how's things? Are you okay? How's lockdown treating you? Oh, it could be worse. You know, it's a good job it's not raining. The fact that it's sunny outside makes there it all the more pleasant, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's a frustrating time. It's a, it's a difficult time we all find ourselves in. And uh, the hotline uh, to your patients as well, people calling you as well. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, as we discussed last time I was on, I've had a, a hotline from nine in the morning till nine in the evening and it's been pretty much busy all day every day just handing out advice yeah so, so uh, this is a br- brilliant idea as well to get a group uh, of you together west yorkshire dentists the first yeah. in the country to do this so where did the idea come from well the idea i mean dentists we're all very very active on social media and we have very very you know we've got a lot of forums uh, support forums for each other so a group of us um, uh, just made contact with each other. Uh, it was by a Facebook forum initially. Uh, and uh, the problem arose because the initial lockdown period was supposed to only be three weeks. And the advice was not to see any patients face to face and just to hand out you know, prescriptions and uh, painkillers where appropriate. However, when it became um, a little bit more apparent that this is going to go on longer than three weeks, uh, you know, there, there are patients out there which are desperate. They're struggling with, you know, uh, toothaches, broken teeth. So how do we help these people? And um, so we decided that, you know, to to reduce uh, the risk of infection and, and reduce, you know, person to person contact, it would be a good idea if we all grouped together and then just formed one central hub so our patients could have access to care if they needed it more immediately than having to, you know, wait, ring through the NHS 111 services, which were already inundated. Mm. Uh, so it's just something that we just thought we'd group together and, and, you know, take the pressure off the system and provide a better service for the people we already look after. If someone wakes up one day and they've got severe toothache and there's, there's a yeah. serious problem, how can you how can you help someone with toothache remotely? Uh, remotely, it depends what's causing the toothache. Um, if it is an infection, so if it is like you know a severe swelling which is compromising the airway or it's swelling up the face, then remotely we can prescribe antibiotics, mm. uh, which is it's good for many many cases. But you know as we've established over the weeks that that's not going to get us through this period. So that's why it was necessary to start something like this. Um, say for instance, someone needs root canal work or, or something like that, or maybe they've they've eaten some food and they've they've mm. just broken a tooth clean off. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone if they if they've got, if they've got that potential injury? Well, first of all, if they've actually got their own dentist, uh, so in the sense that I know there's many people that aren't registered with a dentist, so we can come on to that, but uh, the people that actually do have a dental practice to go to, the first port call is still their own dentist. So, you know, if it's a private practice like ours, we now have our own emergency hub that we can accommodate you on. However, it's an NHS practice that you go to, then there are NHS 111 urgent dental care centres which have been set up regionally now. So if if a face-to-face appointment is required, um, something probably could be sorted. Right, and, and you mentioned those that are not registered with NHS dentists. Yeah, then the first port of call would be 111. Uh, however, if you're not getting anywhere with 111, then, you know, you can give us a call and we can advise you. It just depends. There are still very, very strict, um, you know, um, uh, problems uh, to which we can help you with. So we can't just help you with absolutely everything. You know, minor problems will have to be just uh, left until we reopen fully. But, um, you know, you can cause if if you can't get anywhere with 111. However, I will stress that 111 is still operational and they're still handing out advice. It's just that many of the urgent dental care centres locally uh, are running out of, you know, uh, PPE, personal protective equipment, mm. and they're just inundated at the moment. So we'll, we'll help where we can. Because it's difficult, I'm guessing, because of the aerosol effect. This is why dentistry is, is a big no-no at the moment, but someone desperately Absolutely. needs an extraction. Yeah, if somebody desperately, desperately needs it, then, then we'll have a look at it. Uh, but, I mean, the, it comes down to a, an initial telephone triage. So going through a list of questions, talking to you on a one-to-one basis, we'll be able to establish mm. uh, if it's appropriate for you to come in or not. And what happens if um, you know the rules don't change? I mean, do, do we know if you've been given, given any indication when you can start seeing patients again? 
Well, you see, this is the problem that we actually have at the moment is, uh, you know, uh, we've been getting messages from the government about other sectors being able to go back to work, but yeah. dentistry hasn't been discussed yet. Uh, however, I would like to stress as a dental professional myself that dentistry, you know, given the uh, the aerosol generating procedures that we've been talking about, given that we already have very, very strict cross-infection measures in place, uh, you know, even before the COVID crisis came along. So we are one of the safest places you can visit. Uh, so we are desperate to get open again, simply so we can help the public, because we know that there's so many people out there which are just struggling with toothache. I'm guessing it's going to be a bit like hairdressers and, and, and things yeah. like that, because trying to get an appointment for any hairdresser or, or beauty salon or anything like that is going to be mm. really difficult. I'm guessing it's going to be the same in the dental world as well, isn't it? Trying to get an appointment is going to be very much sought after. We are going to be inundated when we reopen, definitely. Um, I'm talking daily to patients and, and the, the message is, is, you know, I'll contact you as soon as we're open again. And I think mm. we're going to be busy for months mm. afterwards. Uh, but um, I'm just, uh, we're, we're guessing, you know, as, as, as a profession, we're hoping beginning, mid, maybe end of June, we'll be able to open in some uh, form or another. Initially, it's most likely just going to be for emergency treatment rather than routine treatment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's slowly happening throughout Europe now as well. So colleagues in Italy, Germany, you know, Scandinavia, they're all slowly reopening as well. So hopefully not too long now. Well, Dr. Armin Barty, thank you so much for coming on today and, and giving us a bit of an update. And we hope to speak to you again on the show shortly and soon. Very kind. Thanks a lot.